Hello, fellow YouTubers! Tis I, the Rumpled One. Oh, I read a book recently. The 50th Law. It's by 50 Cent, the rapper, and Robert Greene. And Robert Greene is also the author of 48 Laws of Power. And let's see, I think he wrote a book, The Art of Seduction. And he also wrote the 30th... 33 Strategies of War, all of which are good books. I really like his writing style, so I was curious, went to my uh, local library and checked out a copy, and I read it. It's got some good points. I'm going to have to put on my specs, you know, the eyes, the eyes aren't what they used to be. But I'll, I made some notes on the pages here, and I'll, I'll read you a few things. Okay, here we go. Page 58. When he was eventually freed, he refused to take civil action against the state. That would acknowledge he had been in prison and needed compensation. He needed nothing. He was now a free man with the essential skills to get power in the world. After prison, he became a successful advocate for prisoner rights and was awarded several honorary degrees. Now, you're probably wondering who we were talking about. It was Reuben Hurricane Carter. He was a middleweight boxer. You may remember his story, and you may not. I don't know who likes boxing out there. Okay, let's go on to page 75. Think about this. Events in life are not negative or positive. They are completely neutral. The universe does not care about your faith. It is indifferent to the violence that may hit you or to death itself. Things merely happen to you. It is your mind that chooses to interpret them as negative or positive. And because you have layers of fear that dwell deep within you, your natural tendency is to interpret temporary obstacles in your path as something larger. Setbacks and crisis. So, sounds a lot like Robert Ringer and Harry Brown. See, the mind's very powerful. But most people, they misunderstand things because, see, in our minds, we got words and we got pictures. You know, some people think in words. Some people think in pictures. Most people are usually, it's a, it's a little bit of both, kind of a hybrid. But what happens is, is when you use words, and if you use the improper words, things change. You know, things like, you hurt my feelings. I can't hurt your feelings. It's how you interpret my actions or my inaction. And that's what this book was saying. Okay, that was page 75. We'll move on to page 77. Sorry about that. I didn't actually mark it because since I don't own this book, it's the library's book. I didn't want to mark it. Well, here's something here. You do not wait for things to get better. You seize this chance to prove yourself. Mentally framing a negative event as a blessing in disguise makes it easier for you to move forward. It is a kind of mental alchemy, transforming crap into sugar. Uh, he didn't use the word crap, but I try not to uh, use profanity on YouTube. It's not really necessary. Sometimes, <laughs> though, uh, you just may have to. I'm, I'm looking for another quote here.
I'll continue on page 77. There's a lot of good stuff here. Understand we live in a society of relative prosperity, but in many ways this turns out to be a detriment to our spirit. We come to feel that we naturally deserve good things, that we have certain privileges due to us. When setbacks occur, it is almost a personal affront or punishment. How could this have happened, we ask. We either blame other people or we blame ourselves. In each case, or in both cases, we lose valuable time and become unnecessarily emotional. Think about that. Just ponder that thought for a second. I mean, is that true about you? Is it true about somebody else? That you know? Can you see this happening? Like on a daily or weekly or monthly basis around you. How something happens. And some people, like I was watching some uh, reality TV the other night. And the, the littlest thing these people make in the, you know, some big dramatic event. It's just like, you got to be kidding me, right? But, you know, that's just the way uh, some of these people react. And they bring themselves unnecessary pain and suffering because of it. But I guess they just don't know any better. Here we go. The truth is that life is by nature harsh and competitive. No matter how much money or resources you have accumulated, someone will try to take them from you, or unexpected changes in the world will push you backwards. These are not adverse circumstances, but merely life as it is. You have no time to lose to fear and depression, and you do not have the luxury of waiting. See, the clock is ticking. In the game of life, there's no timeouts. That's just the way it is. Okay, let's move forward, fast forward here to uh, page 222. That's not to say there wasn't anything noteworthy between page 77 and page 222, but I just made some high points here. Okay, too often our concept of learning is to absorb ideas from books, to do what others tell us to, and perhaps to do some controlled exercises. But this is an incomplete and fearful concept of learning, cut off from practical experience. We are creatures who make things. We don't simply imagine them. You experiment, you take some hard blows, and you see what works and doesn't work in real time. You expose yourself and your work to public scrutiny. Your failures are embedded in your nervous system. You do not want to repeat them. Your successes are tied to immediate experience and teach you more. You come to respect the process in a deep way because you see and feel the progress you can make through practice and steady labor. Taken far enough, you gain a fingertip feel for what needs to be done because your knowledge is tied to something physical and visceral. And having such intuition is the ultimate point of mastery. Now, this goes with just about anything you learn, whether it's music, art, trading, and, and this is really, if any of you traders are watching this, it's experience, because you know, people tell me, oh, the buy zone doesn't work, or oh, your stuff doesn't work. Meanwhile, other people thank me, man, because of you, you know, I made X amount of dollars last week or last month or whatever. So you see, it's up to the individual. It's what you take from that experience, what goes in here, what goes into your muscle memory, and how you use it, like you said, in real time. You know, not just reading from a book, but you get out there, you get your hands dirty, you get some bumps and bruises, and you, know, and you learn. And it sticks. Let's look over here on page 235 now. Okay, it's a quote. James Baldwin. Let me point out to you that freedom is not something that anybody can be given. Freedom is something people take and people are as free as they want to be. James Baldwin. Now, if you think about it, 
you know, land of the free. If you watched any of my other videos, you know that we've never been free. If you are watching this video, you have never been free. You've experienced the illusion of freedom. But ever since you were born, once you started making money, you had to pay taxes. Because you're not free. And you have to understand this. If you don't get to keep everything that you earn, you are not free. You are a servant or a slave. It's that simple. You are serving something above you. Something bigger than you. Something more powerful than you. Something that has you under their thumb. Especially when they can tell you one year, well, you have to pay, you know, 20-some percent in taxes. And then they come back the next year and tell you you got to pay 30-some percent in taxes. And then the next year, 40-some percent. When they can control how much you get to keep of what you earn, you are not free. That is an important point. Can't be said enough. And maybe someday there'll be enough people here in America that have had it up to here with the taxes and they do something about it. Okay, the last page I want to read from is page 250. Understand, at any moment, you could kick this philosophy and its ideas into the trash can by doing something irrational and unexpected, contrary to what you've done in the past, an act not possibly explained by your upbringing or nervous system. What prevents you from taking such action is not mommy, daddy, or society, but your own fears. You are essentially free to move beyond any limits others have set for you to recreate yourself as thoroughly as you wish. So what they're saying is this is kind of like Harry Brown. You know, freedom in an unfree world. You know, it's how you perceive things. I mean, if you think about it, in America, right now, it's basically against the law just to be alive. Now, I know that sounds kind of funny, but think about it. If you're alive, and you don't have a home, and you're not carrying ID, and you don't have any money, and the cop stops you, in certain places, you can get picked up for vagrancy. So, just the mere fact that you're alive, in some places, is illegal. So, how are you free? Think about it. Once again, the book, The 50th Law, by 50 Cent and Robert Greene. I recommend, if your local library has it, go check it out. Otherwise, see if you can find a used copy. Don't need to spend extra money. So, I highly recommend reading that book, because Robert Greene, I think, is a fantastic author, and just can't wait to see what he has coming up next. So... People, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt. Use what you can. Chuck the rest. Most things are just my opinion. And I'm just, you know, another person just like you. So, uh, you know, do the best you can with what you got. And I guess we will, uh, I'll uh, probably do some more book reviews. Or actually, I'm kind of behind. I mean, I know I still need to read some more from the Alpha Strategy and Ringer's looking out for number one. And as I mentioned a couple times, Harry Brown's How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World. So, I'll sign off because this video is probably too dang long. <laughs>